Welcome to the Nuggets Inc. podcast presented by no one. I'm your host, Matt Schubert, back once again in the saddle with Bennett Durando. We've got a whole bunch of things to talk about. That lefty hook from Kyrie Irving, Ant Edwards bricking a three when it matters, the Nuggets on a roll, 12-2 and two since the All-Star break. All that and more coming up next. And we are back for another edition of the Nuggets, Inc. podcast presented by Nobody. Yeah, I'm back. Been away for, what, about a month? Three weeks? Four weeks? Best month of my life. (laughs) You just just were out for several weeks uh, from the pod and then just came in here like, like... No, oh, I come in hot at eleven, pretty yeah, much. Yeah, no, that's. Like, it, I don't. I only have one setting. Yeah, it is eleven. Firing off, Pac-12 takes, St. Louis no, I, takes. For, I didn't start the Pac-12 geography. thing. I didn't. I didn't start the Pac-12 thing. That was that was Aaron who started that. Matt was gone for four weeks and almost left with a heart attack immediately. <laughs> <laughs> it was outrageous. I'm ex- I'm intrigued to see if you bring the energy that you just had five minutes ago oh, I, in, I'm, into I'm, this podcast. I felt like I've already brought it. Yeah. It, it's it's already here. It, it, I can't take it away. It's already here. That's great. Yeah, no. So the Nuggets, while I've been away, I so I, I just want to let listeners know what, what's happened in the last four weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, state basketball. <laughs> I was, uh, once state basketball occurs, I just give my life over to state basketball. You love state basketball if your tweets are any indicator oh i i love it because it's, it, it's always like i have a friend who tweets like this but but like kind of tongue-in-cheek okay and it's completely earnest from you it'll it's just no context remarks about players in these high school basketball games that nobody has ever heard of it's like yeah it's yeah, like that's correct <laughs> it's like you do not want to leave Sally James alone in the corner. <laughs> that's my, I, I might have tweeted something like that's that. That's like the template of every tweet. <laughs> yep, yep. It's it's yeah. like it's like guard guard Dean Davis one on one in clutch time at your own peril. It's like yes. it's all that kind yep, of stuff. Yep. Like Oh yeah, no. It was great. I enjoyed the heck out of it. Uh Smoky Hill gave me a, a lovely finish. Um, Valor Christian, they did their thing. Great. Uh, they there was a I think and a-, a Ron, you can chime in on this too. Uh, I think you saw him play. Like maybe the archetypal Valor Christian star. Uh, what do you mean? Just you know <laughs> has has the the whole just panache. You know all the oh we're looking at a photo of him right now. Right now. What's his name? Um, God, why can't I think of his name right now? It's it's now it's escaping me. I my my brain is dead from. Got to check the tweets. It was uh, oh gosh why why can't I uh, Cole Sharer is his name. Heck of a player. Shout out Cole Sharer. Cole Cole Sharer. Uh, Sharer. Sorry. Yeah, fantastic player. Heck of a player. Yeah, huh. yeah. He's got the right amount of. Uh, uh, I think the kids would call it. Uh, What's, what's, what's the word the kids use for confidence? Rizzing? He's like, rizzing? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> no? No? Did I misuse that? <laughs> uh, I don't, you can just say confidence, Matt. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's a heck of a player. 22 PPG, 4 APG, probably 5 RPG. Oh, yeah. He took over games. It was fantastic. Um, uh, the girls' tournament, also great. Uh, if you like basketball, you should go to that thing just for one day. Just one day. Sit down. Watch about two or three games. It's fun. I enjoy it. The girls seems great. Two all-time players. Oh, yeah. Playing simultaneously, both underclassmen. Oh, yeah. There's a l- – listen, well, Grandview wasn't there, so Sienna Betts did not play in states this year. That was sad. She's got a couple titles. But uh, Bree Crittenden, she could play. That's a that's a real player. She's going to be playing in the WNBA someday. Hmm. There's no doubt about that. Um, nice. Anyway, what year is she? She's a sophomore. Okay, so no college yet. No, 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 no yeah, but she's got like UCLA, all yeah, pretty much yeah. all of the thirty PPG sophomore, right? 
Correct. She's already scored uh, over 1,500 points in her career. Dang. Yeah. On her way to a record for the state? She would, yeah, that would break the record. If she stays on this pace, she yeah. would break the, the state record. Wow. So, <clears throat> anywho, that happens. I go away for two weeks. The Nuggets go on a tear. Uh, they have gone 12-2 and two since the All-Star break. 3-1 uh, and one on this last road trip. The only reason they lost the game was because Kyrie Irving hit a running left-handed hook shot from the free throw line. Outside of that, maybe a perfect road trip. And they didn't even play particularly well in some of those games. Yeah, there were kind of, there were pretty weird stretches in both Minnesota and Dallas, that's for sure. Um, a lot of encouraging things overall. The 12 and 2 is a lot closer to 14 and 0 than it is to 10 and 4 or 9 and 5 right now because right. you've got because the, the Suns loss was you, the other one, right? You've got Kevin Durant hitting a game tying three with 25 or so seconds left and you've got Luka Doncic hitting a game tying three with 25 or so seconds left. They are that close to undefeated since the break. And um, both of those games were games where they came back from double digit deficits mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. you know, Michael Myers can't be killed team. They're in it at the end every time. You did so you didn't see the Kyrie shot? Uh, not live. Here's what's happened. Uh, I was watching the game, and I believe it was like, what, 12-point game with like three minutes to go. And I was like, you know, all right, this game's yeah. over. It was like 13 with five, something like that. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and and I was like, I just thought, this game's done. I'm going to gear up for the NCAA tournament uh, bracket uh, reveal. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we had stuff to do around it. There's work around it that I had to deal with. So I switch over, and then, I don't know. 20 minutes later, I'm looking at Twitter, and I see your story come through, and it's all of a sudden, Kyrie Irving, amazing shot to win this. <laughs> it's like, how did they even need to do that? How is that even required? It's one of the craziest buzzer beaters I've ever seen. Unbelievable um, shot. It's, it's, it's the part of Kyrie Irving where you're like, man, if this guy just had it going between his ears, he would have been, you know, top 15, top 20 player, you know, like being able to be available all the time, play every game. Mm-hmm. Instead, it's, you know, moody guy that is sort sure. of all over the place. But, that, but it hasn't been an issue this year at all. No, so no. no. You got to hand it to him. Yeah, um, but yeah, once out of every five years, you actually get a year where he doesn't have drama. And and when he doesn't have drama, the we all kind of remember he's one of the most skilled ball handlers and one of the most skilled finishers Shot for, makers. for a guard of, ever. Um, the the l- level of ambi- being ambidextrous that amb- it takes. Ambidexterity? Ambidexterity? I think dexterity? that's a word. Is yeah. it dexterity or ambidexterity? Well, dexterity is like hand yeah. skills in general. But, so, ambid- so ambidexterity would okay. be. All right. with big words from uh, Big Bennett over here. What do you suppose the kids call that, Matt? Rizzing. <laughs> Uh-huh. Uh <laughs> the left the left hand. Um the left hand thing was incredible. The unbelievable shot. It's you've got Jokic contesting it. Pretty well too. A very good contest. Um it's kind of funny the post game reactions to it are Malone was was seemed heated after the game. I think he was more heated at the rebounding because that was just a, a nightmare rebounding game for Denver and a complete and anomaly. Also, yeah, an anomaly. Yeah. Um, and so it, it was that more so than the shot, but uh, he did not spend much time at the podium in his postgame presser uh, and and then got out of there. And then the players, you talk to them about it, it's like, what are you going to do? Like, Kyrie makes a shot like that. Jokic said he was kind of surprised, but kind of not the overwhelming sentiment from everyone in that locker room was basically, if anyone's going to make that exact shot, it is Kyrie Irving. Um, and I think they're pretty much right. I was, I'm was i pretty fortunate because Dallas is one of the last remaining uh, courtside seat, um, like behind the scorer's table places for media. And so I had about the best view in the house um, of that shot. Right across from Patrick Mahomes, we were staring at each other. So did you? Did you wink at him? I tried. I tried to riz him, but <laughs> <laughs> he didn't hear me. <laughs> uh, is rizzing a sound? Is that it? no? We're just not gonna <laughs> give any context to that. Um, so yeah, it's an incredible shot. Luca hits the game tying three. The rebounding thing is like the only thing where you kind of walk away from that. Like, is there anything concerning going forward? And 
here's the thing about that. Um, it was pretty bad. They lose 23-6 on second chance points. It was just a ton of offensive rebounds, especially when the second unit was on the floor. But And and in the next couple days, they did film on it between the Dallas and Minnesota games. Um, there were kind of some different um, diagnoses for it, I guess. Michael Malone thought that um, the coaching staff has been emphasizing getting out in transition so much since the break, and there has been a night and day difference for Denver in terms of um, running better, finishing better on fast breaks, just looking to play and transition a lot better. He thinks that that has been stressed to the point where guys start to leak out a little bit early and aren't going after the rebound, basically. Basically just looking to play in transition before they actually have the ball. Classic um, pickup hoops error. Yes, exactly. Um, I think there is there was a little bit of that in that game. Um, I also think that with the second unit in particular, it's a small lineup. You have Peyton Watson plays the four in this current iteration of it. Uh, what has he got like a seven foot two wingspan? He has a long wingspan, so like he he's he's definitely he's kind of a long three stretch four kind of player. And and they're you know he's been training to play in the dunker spot a little bit more. He's been working at that position for sure. But, you know, he's he's not a power forward by any stretch. No, so. he's too skinny. Yes. Um, he's got a – what did Jokic say that uh, our guy down in OKC needed to do? He needed to – You need to get a little get, fatter. Need, yeah. You know, so yeah. Maybe Watson needs to get a little fatter too. Maybe, but I kind of just like his build as it is considering what he's it. able to do as a shot blocker. But at <clears> any rate, he it's like kind of playing a size up, kind of not when he has to play the four. And then Zeke Naji. I know that you, I I mean, we've argued a little about this before. I think you see him more as a small ball five, but. Um, Who, Zeke? Yeah. Yeah. But I, I I think that he looks more comfortable on the floor as a four when he's Can't with other guys. shoot well enough for a four. He, he has to be around the hoop. He's got to be dunking. So this gets to the point, which is you have a small lineup to begin with, and you switch one through five. So a lot of the times Najee gets pulled out from the basket. Watson gets pulled out from the basket, and you end up having. Justin Holiday or or Jamal Murray on a big going for a 50-50 rebound. And there were some long rebounds in the Dallas game, that kind of thing, too. Jamal's but, thick. Um, yeah, he is thick, but he's not going to get a rebound over a seven-foot guy. So, um, he's actually it, not a bad rebounder. Right. No, for, no, yeah, I, he, he can be a really engaged rebounder. But, like, uh, there are just some obvious physical disadvantages that, that are working against him. So, yeah. Um, Here's the thing, that lineup that they've used a lot in March as their primary second unit with uh, Jamal Murray, Christian Brown, Justin Holliday, Peyton Watson, and Zeke Naji has been very good together. Um, I haven't looked at the stats updated since the Minnesota game, but going into the Minnesota game, they had played more than 50 minutes in March with a 4.9 net rating. It is rare to have a positive net rating for any non-Jokic lineup for the Nuggets. Like, you look at almost any iteration of their second unit and they're going to be in the red. That's how so, you get to 12 and 2. Exactly. And and they've had multiple games on that road trip where they basically delivered you have Miami huge stretch from Christian Brown. Huge, Nikola Jokic shouldn't have to play in the fourth quarter in San Antonio. Exactly. Well, I guess it should be Austin. In Austin, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, you you have the Christian Brown and the Reggie Jackson thing in Miami, which is the main reason they win a game that Jokic scores 12 or 14 or whatever it was and then you are able to sit Jokic in the fourth uh in the Spurs game. So that they, it's been a huge part of their success since the break. They have a 38% rebounding percentage. That's the one thing. And and it makes sense. Like the way that they play defensively and just the general size of it, I kind of think that if you're trying to seek out a lineup that can stay in the black without Jokic, then you kind of have to be willing to live with the side effects. And that's just one of the side effects occasionally with that lineup. And so... It is what it is. Dallas has the personnel for it. They're a pretty big team. Um, they have bigger guys in their second unit. So, you know, it was it was a rough game. There was a, a pretty furious Malone timeout in there um, where he yelled, get a bleep him rebound uh, right after the timeout. But it is what it is. They usually out-rebound teams. <laughs> uh, I, I heard somebody posit that the way to beat the Nuggets was to be super big and basically batter Nikola Jokic for four quarters and, and, and try to get rebounds. And that's the way that you beat the Nuggets. That's the only way to do it. Or 
don't be super big and batter Nikola Jokic for four quarters because the Minnesota game is an interesting thought experiment there. Right. They start Kyle Anderson at the five because they have no Cat, no Gobert, and no Nas Reed. And then Jokic gets Kyle Anderson in foul trouble with 3,003 minutes. That That's one of the craziest things all season, by the way, is 3,003 minutes and then none the rest of the game for Kyle Anderson. Um, Slow-mo. But you get... Two-way guy, Luca Garza in there. Go Hawkeyes, I guess. Um, oh, my gosh. Yeah. I, I have to say, I'm actually surprised he gets NBA minutes. I know he's a two-way guy, but like, and they had nobody, so that's the reason he got NBA yes. minutes. But even yes. then, it's like, really? It's just, it was almost like when when that happened, when he checks in and he's surrounded by whatever's left of Minnesota's starting lineup, it's like half hilarious because, like, how does it come to this? And... <laughs> And half frustrating because these Minnesota games, you want to look at them as as these you know barometers for where the Nuggets are at in relation to another one of the best teams in the West, who they haven't seen for for months between games, um, and you don't really get an accurate sense of that from a game like this where they're missing so much. Uh, and then so Jokic just goes into all out attack mode, has twenty two and ten at half. Um, Minnesota's doubling him, but not quite like full throttle enough to make much of a difference. And then they kind of commit to it a little bit more in the third quarter. I think they've still got small lineups. They've still got Kyle Anderson playing small ball five and the Nuggets have their worst offensive stretch of the season pretty much. Um, And that's the power of Minnesota's defense, I guess, even without the defensive player of the year favorite uh, out on the floor. I, I wonder what that says about him. About Gobert? Yeah. You think he doesn't deserve it? I think he's won it many times. And I think that certainly all the numbers suggest that he's a great defender. I think that there's a way to really neutralize him, especially in a seven game series. The, the, I, the Clippers. Yeah, have, I think that's different. Yeah. The like, Clippers have done it before. I've, I, the Nuggets did it to, to him before. I, I don't know. I guess that's the thing about Gobert. Well, Great regular regular season player. You get him in a seven game series, and his flaws really start to show. That and like Jokic's ultimate superpower is being a seven game series player. I think also. Well, so is Jamal Murray. Yeah, that that too. But like Jokic is just going to figure you out the more time that he has to Correct. see you, yeah. and so. Like I don't. But, like, but he's not the Anthony only one. Davis or Rudy Gobert. Whatever. He's not the only one to do that to sure. Rudy Gobert. Yeah, yeah. The the Clippers basically went with a small lineup and ran him off the freaking court. Right. Um, I I'm just, so I don't know. There was there were a couple stretches where like Luka Garza gets up on on Jokic's legs, knocks him off of a spot, kind of in like the pinch post, gets him out on the perimeter, and, and Jokic loses the ball. That's Luka Garza. Like it 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 got to a point in that third quarter where Jokic was pretty flustered. Minnesota just plays so physical and so long on the perimeter um, that you could say that Jaden McDaniels is actually their better defender. That he is really yeah, the he's guy. He's outstanding. I, I actually thought Murray. It was like he had a bad stretch in that third quarter and everything too. But like he was playmaking as much as he could in that game. I think he ended up with eleven assists. Um, he did a pretty commendable job against a guy who really bottled him up back in November, that first matchup of the season. So. Murray McDaniels would that's that's the matchup that I'm circling and I'm sure everyone else is circling if this ends up being a playoff matchup because they didn't have McDaniels on the floor for that first round series last year. He's a guy who is capable of neutralizing Murray for stretches. Yeah. Murray's a guy who's <laughs> capable of figuring anyone out. I just think that that's like a really interesting battle to watch play out over. Hey, hey Ron, you got game. something to say it looks like. No, I don't. Oh. I, you, you you looked you looked perched and ready to say something. No, I was just handling the dials over here. <laughs> Bennett, did I did I misread body language there, or did you have the same feeling? Matt's a little rusty. I've got to apologize on Matt's behalf. Uh, <laughs> yeah, out of rhythm. Been a little bit since he did this. Get out of here. His three point shots not going down. I'm like not the, a three point shooter. Like I play in Denver's the post. Shots in that third quarter. A- ask a Aaron. I'm, I'm not. I'm out. I'm in the paint. Okay, Luca Garza is knocking you off your spots too. Then I doubt that. <laughs> <laughs> Matt's surprisingly powerful, and he can jump. I could. No, he could. He could. can't anymore. No, it's over. He's it, definitely those days hobbled. are done. Okay. Um, I mean, he's missing podcasts 
every week. He's at that point in his career where he can't even suit up. Wow. State basketball, all right? So point being, like long North story Glenn, short. By the way, I want to mention this. North Glenn, not there. Did Dang. not did not make states. If they had sent us their five dollars, they probably would have made it. Yeah, mm-hmm. next year. Next year, that's our year. Yeah, the Norsemen are they're prime. They they had they increased their win total. I think they doubled it. So they're on pace. They're they're in the, going in the right direction. Yeah. No doubt about it. Program building. Yeah, you got to respect it. Yeah. Um, I completely lost my train of thought. That, that's, but, I'm but sorry. That's on me. The ultimate point was the Nuggets. Uh, Played some really bad offense against not like a super big, you know, the the double big front court kind of thing that Minnesota is known for. Yeah. So still won the um, game in Minnesota. It gets to a point where well, how many points did Ant Edwards have in the fourth quarter? Zero. That that seems like something. So I mean, you can look at it two ways. Although though. he got a really good shot at the end of that game, like he had poor KCP stumbling all over himself. I know. I know. If you're thinking, KCP said, I rolled over on the ground and just hoped that he didn't make it. Um, yes. He wasn't trying to take a foul on the play, he said, either. So It looked he like just, he was trying to take a charge, almost. That's what I thought, too. Yeah. yeah. Um, but no, he was like, I was just trying to get in his space and and got barreled over. He, he talked to the ref afterward, actually, and said, did you see that? Uh, and, you know, didn't matter. The Nuggets won. But I'm sure after the Kyrie shot after the way that a couple of these games have ended recently and the way that Minnesota was making threes in the last minute 45 of that game, um, the Nuggets had to think that that shot was going in. Right. That's, that's kind of, uh, you know, what, what comes to mind. It, it, it's an interesting game because the Nuggets scored 12 points in 11 minutes in the third. They have a nice little stretch at the end of the third. Then the second unit comes out and things keep getting worse. Um, and that's kind of the only really rough stretch that they've had, I guess, um, recently. And Zeke Naji not playing with lower back pain, by the way. So they went with Gordon at the backup five for this one, and he had a really weird game where he was eating in the first quarter and then just got completely flustered. I think he was trying to over-dribble a bunch. Um, yeah, I, I think there should be a rule on Aaron Gordon, like five dribbles, give it up. I think there's a spot where if he gets it deep enough to begin with, like yes. his his sort of power dribble and the way that he's able to sort of duck under the rim and then power through guys is really effective. But if he is just starting, like facing his defender at the perimeter or something and trying to dribble around, don't, then, don't, then it, don't do that. That's that's where it can be a little tougher. And he, he had a few of those moments in this game. He had four turnovers, um, not – particularly great after his first stretch of minutes in the first quarter. And yet, the Nuggets are down 93-89 with seven minutes left, have blown a 18-point lead, and find a way to do it again, um, which is kind of the ultimate testament to this team because they can still rebound from like a truly bad stretch of basketball and find a way to win a game against a really good defense. Holding Ant scoreless in the fourth is a big part of that. MPJ making shots is a big part of that. Jokic having his first assist of the game with a few minutes left is a big part of that. Two assists in the game total. On back-to-back possessions. In fact, so it's 93-89. He assists a Porter three um, and then finds a a cutting Porter for a dunk on the next possession. They go back in front, and they never trail again. That game comes after, uh, I believe the kids do say this, Ant Edwards caught a body. Oh my god! The game before. How, oh, you know what? Uh, I'm I'm very curious for your take about this because this is just like this is Matt Schubert central right here, like potential old school grumpy about it kind of stance. Is that a dunk? Well, I mean, he didn't touch the rim. Yes, that's that's the um, the point of controversy. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I'd say it's borderline. Uh, I kind of feel like you have to touch the rim for it to be a dunk. That. That's just me. Aaron Gordon says it counts. Hey, hey, Ron. What say you? It's a dunk. There was a body on the floor. <laughs> I mean, it was explosive. So if there was a, if I crossed a guy up and hit a jump shot with a and there's a body on the floor, that's a dunk. I think that you'd have to jump over him and really put him down for he that to count as a dunk. He threw the ball into the basket. Did not 
shoot the ball into the basket. That's. I mean, he did shoot the, the ball difference. into the basket. It it was a throw I know, shot. I know, but like you understand what I'm saying. You're just trying to be the d- d- jerk. Uh, <laughs> It was like Michael Jordan at the end of Space Jam. That arm just stretched out there for 25 feet and dropped in. It was a great play and maybe even a dunk. I'm not going to I'm not going to go die on the hill of that's not a dunk uh land. I'm I'm not going that way. Okay. Okay. But um, I thought you might. I did see some maybe a little bit of overreaction about how this is the greatest in-game dunk in the history of the NBA. No. Aaron it's, Gordon Aaron Gordon called the top 10. Thoughts I'd on have that? To, I'd have to go back, but you know, Tom Chambers literally jumped over a dude and two hand dunked on his face. Um, Michael Jordan had a couple of different dunks in his career that were pretty darn good. Um, Sean Kemp, Sean Kemp had like at least four or five of those in a season. Was uh, do you remember Sean Kemp, Aaron? Are you are are you old enough to remember? Of course, I remember Sean. Kemp. The Rain Man. Yeah, that guy had. Some of the greatest in-game dunks you've ever seen. Just fantastic. Well, the one on Chris Gatlin points at him at the end. You remember that? Yeah. It was a great dunk. I think Aaron Gordon's on on Shamit is better, actually. What he did to Shamit? Yeah. Uh, I would have to agree with that. I agree. I like Jamal's uh, offensive foul on DJ. Was it DJ Wilson? Oh, the one that got taken away? That was pretty brutal, too. Yeah. He didn't go from five feet away and stretch to get it, but those are good in-game dunks as well. What's sick about this one is that Edwards dislocates his finger on it, but gives Collins a potential concussion (laughs) (laughs) with the dislocated finger, which is just like pretty metal, and, and then flies back to Minnesota and plays the next night. Just like, look, I... You know, we can say that he didn't show up in the fourth quarter or whatever, but like... He had 30 points in that game. But he had... Credit to Anthony Edwards. He had 30 points in that game um, on 24 hours rest after dislocating the finger. It's a game where he has every reason not to play. Like, if there's no Cat and no Gobert, that's the definition of a scheduled loss. If you've got a dislocated finger, it's a back-to-back and, and you want to take the night off. And Edwards shows up. He does show up. That's, he, that's what he does. And he showed up and was like... I want every shot from the opening tip of that game. I think he took seven shots in the first five minutes or something, and he was firing up the crowd. It was the same energy that he would play with on any other night, and he is like, like he is one of the most electric players to watch in person. Oh yeah, no, he's amazing. He's, he's incredible. I, I I'm I am a big Ant Edwards fan. I have slowly over time. I was a, a skeptic at first yeah. just because of. I thought his, you know, his work at Georgia was pretty substandard, <laughs> and they they didn't really do anything. Um, I don't think they even made the NCAA tournament. It's uh, a good question. Pretty I'm sure, not they, sure didn't. they did. They lost to Missouri. I so. mean, you brought up some guy I've never heard of who who blocked his shot or, or yeah, Twin Cities native uh, Reed Nico. Yeah, nobody blocked knows. his shot at the end of a game. Nobody to, knows to who that Missouri is. Win. Nobody knows that is. So, and so, is the college work wasn't great. Best no. moment of his life, probably. Yeah, that's so. that's the highlight. Um, but he competes like hell when he's on the floor all the time, consistently, both ends. Has, I would say, top five athletic ability in the league um, and is starting to become a really skilled player as well. Mm-hmm. Um, if you were trying to sell me on Minnesota is going to be a problem in the playoffs, that would be the reason. It's because of him. I, I remain I remain skeptical about the team in general. I just... I think they top out at conference finals at best. Um, but, I mean, I don't know. Maybe he takes it to another level in the playoffs and we see something else. He's also taken it to another level since the Cat injury. He's averaging over 30 since yeah, then. So. If you're on Cat Island, by the way, this hasn't been a great few weeks for you because they look just as good without him. Aaron is Cat Island. He drafted him twice, remember? Yes, that's correct. <laughs> The fans weighed in and said it was the premier draft of its time. Which one? It wasn't it your parents? Both. <laughs> <laughs> Both drafts. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't know about that. It's exciting. I'm happy. For I you. seem to remember a, a young Bennett at the All Star game clutching me as Cat was competing, hoping for a Cat win in the three point competition. He was on Cat Island. 
That's, was I? Listen, that's... But I the, here's I the thing. I said Lillard. You were holding my arm, squeezing, hoping for cat, <laughs> digging the closet. Have we talked since the All-Star game? I, have I been on the podcast since No, you haven't. You, you ran into Bill Walton at yeah. the All-Star game. Yeah, it was great. Had a nice talk with Bill Walton. He was outstanding. Walked us out onto the floor. He wanted to be sitting for the interview, so... Um, yeah. So he like took us back out on the court afterward to uh, to remove some other people from their seats. And that's not even the most famous person that you talked to in the last month. No, it is not. Novak Djokovic. Yeah. After... Djokovic. It's Djokovic. Is it Djokovic or Djokovic? Yeah. I, I, yeah. The I, D. I've been doing makes that wrong. Djokovic. Djokovic. Okay. Novak Djokovic after the Lakers game, which was another fantastic basketball game yeah that was amazing um that occurred it was like three weeks ago now we're talking about that was lebron james mm-hmm. passes 40k um and novak Jok- jokovic jokovic <laughs> is there it's not that hard <laughs> it's, it's not he's he's been in the the consciousness for 20 years as one of the yeah, best athletes he's, he's in the pretty world. well known <laughs> So a delightful human being, from what I've been told. Uh, he was really nice. He was he was very he was very uh, accommodating to my interview request. Um, and and slightly unfortunate, I've I may or may not have have rooted against him in a number of major finals. Alcaraz, over the were you going for Alcaraz? This I last? love Alcaraz. He's so fun. Um, we had a lot of talks about it. You rooted against him. Well, I I, do, I grew up a Nadal guy. That's just kind of the thing. So like, um, what you don't like Nadal? He's not my favorite. He's like the Aunt Edwards of tennis. Yeah. I'm just a big Novak guy. Yeah. Um, I'm not with you on that. I, but, but what, okay, so mm-hmm. uh, Novak Djokovic, um, how is he around Nicole Jokic? Did, did you get to see that interaction at all, how they interact? Yeah, well, so it was kind of funny because while I was interviewing Djokovic, uh, Nicola walked up. Like he was kind of curious or skeptical about what was going on, and uh, and Novak is like, "I'm talking about the legend <laughs> over to him," and Jokic is like, "Huh?" And then he's like, "What's up?" And I'm like, "What's up?" And then he walks away, and that was that. But uh, but uh, but no, they they were um, they uh, hugged each other, dapped each other up after the game. They were talking quite a bit um, in the hallways afterward. It was just a unique scene because. You, these are professional basketball players who just shared a court with LeBron James. They share a court with Nikola Jokic every night. They, they're they always around famous people who, and there's a certain celebrity status that comes with being an NBA player, but it was like the next level up, kind of. There was a degree of, of just like everyone being starstruck um, in that Nuggets By traveling Jokovic. party. Yes. Um, is is he a bigger star than LeBron James? It's an interesting question. I I, I feel of, like they're on the same level. I thought about that a little bit because it's, you know, they're both in the conversation for the best athlete in their sport of all time. Yeah. Djokovic might be more definitive. LeBron is probably maybe not. Are whatever. we sure Djokovic is the greatest tennis player ever? We're sure. Yes. We're sure. I mean, like. You wouldn't take Nadal over him? I love Nadal. Like he again, he was my favorite. I mean, if we're but, just counting Grand Slam titles, yeah, is that Djokovic all we're doing? Has more. Is that all so, we're doing? We're just counting Grand Slam titles. It's a little he's, hard. He's done to it make... on more surfaces or more consistently on other surfaces. It's not like a team sport, right? It's how a many little... French Opens does he have? I don't know. Like Djokovic? one? Does he have one or two? No, I he might have like three or four. Does he have three or four? I think so. We don't need to look it up. That's fine. Um, <laughs> okay, but I don't want to be an a variety of surface plays into it oh no don't no doubt about it i i used to argue with the guy i thought pete sampras was better than andre agassi but his main argument was andre agassi won a grand slam on every surface yeah he had the pete, career grand slam pete sampras was a grass and hard court guy hmm. and that's it interesting yeah i think look like i kind of resisted it for a number of years but tennis isn't like football or basketball or these team sports where there's more nuance than just number of rings or whatever. Like it is an individual sport. And if you've won the most titles in an individual sport, it's kind of hard to argue against you as the best. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. It, it's a little black and white. The loneliest sport too. 
You're just out there by yourself. I feel like golf is thoughts. lonelier. Yeah. I, no, I you've know. got a caddy. I, yeah, I, you got a caddy. You're always rapping yeah, and true. talking. I yeah. thought this was the coolest thing about the interview with Djokovic, though, was how like amazed he was by the the you know the synchronicity in, in team basketball that the Nuggets play. Because he, he pointed out, I play an individual sport. I'm not used to kind of you know leaning on on teammates and existing with that chemistry constantly so much. And the Nuggets just turned it on with five minutes left in this game and, and just played like a perfect unit together. And and Jokic could score 50 every night, but he doesn't because he's a great team player. You know, the stuff that a lot of people say, but I thought it was interesting coming from him being someone who is particularly dominant in an individual sport. Is is Jokic, what does he have to do to supplant Djokovic in his own country? Uh, that's going to be tough. So, ba- I mean, basketball is the number one sport. Exactly. That, so, th- this, that's where I was going, is that basketball is the sport in that country. If he wins maybe two, three, let's say he wins three titles, he's going to win another MVP this year. I think we're pretty sure about that at this point, right? Unless you want to say, like, oh, Luka just outplayed him in Dallas. He had one of his worst games of the season on national TV, and there have maybe been a couple of recent... I'm just playing devil's advocate, but, like... He's winning the MVP. There are, there are going to be people who make cases for the other guys still that oh is, i agree so of course yeah no but Just, he, he's gonna win it okay uh so that'll be three mvps and if he ends up with let's say two more nba titles which i think is entirely within the realm of possibility i mean that's we're talking about he's entering top 15 top 10 all-time nba players yeah and three, three titles, three MVPs. I think that's uh, Larry Bird's resume. Yeah, yeah that's, you're, you're talking I mean, about that is Bird. Top ten. Yeah, really. That's yeah. yeah. So, certainly better than Kobe. Um, so I, I, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think Poor like Aaron. you you do that best. You know, one of the all time players in a sport that is you know an American sport mm-hmm. that he ends up dominating in America. I don't know. I wish I had more of a you know direct feel for it um i have not been to serbia i have not yet you know yeah and so i i I don't have the ethos to talk about like what what their perception of it would be but it's an interesting question for sure we'll see roger federer not even getting mentioned in the greatest tennis players of all time discussion seems like a slight but we can move on no disrespect Roger Federer. Federer. I like Federer. Roger Federer at his peak was incredible. Incredible. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable player. Um, We're going to take a quick break, and we've got some reader emails to get to. Uh, I believe at least one review, uh, maybe a few other topics. So we'll be right back. Hey there, everyone. Just wanted to let you know, for the Nugget fan in your life, or maybe for yourself, we've got a book. On the championship season that was for the Denver Nuggets, they're hanging a banner. We're selling books. The book is gold standard. How the Denver Nuggets won their first NBA championship. All sorts of great stories and photos. It is the gift that keeps on giving. And we're back from our break. Had some more scintillating tennis uh, talk. That's a lie. I don't know if we did. <laughs> Stop gaslighting what the audience. What are you audience. doing? <laughs> but no, you not. just like let words come out of your mouth like without. <laughs> can I not have fun? Can I can I not enjoy myself? I guess, yeah. Yeah, got to keep up appearances, I guess, for the <laughs> just a nice civilized tennis chat while we were off the air. No, Matt learned what the word riz actually means, so so we're all caught up now. Apparently it's sexual. Not necessarily, but... But kind of. He's halfway to understanding. Yeah. He's getting there. Matt, I it's It's up. no longer hip, though, right? Like, it's already gone to not being a hip thing to no, say. No, that's not true, I don't think. I know what it is. That means it's not hip. Well, you just found out what it... Are no, you saying I found that... out what it was, like, months ago. Riz? Yeah. No, you didn't because also, you didn't know what it meant not twenty only, minutes ago. Not only did I learn did not and I didn't learn about Riz, I also learned about the uh the water mug situation. Are you guys aware of this that Stanleys are now like a accessory for well, young except people? There, there's like a there's like a lead controversy in the products. There's now a lead controversy with Stanley. Yeah. 
I was not aware of that part. I don't want to get like I don't want to libel them or anything here. Yeah, yeah, take but, take care. But, uh, <laughs> let, let's let's be let's be careful here. I just know that it's now like for kids, you go to high school and it's like having a slap bracelet. You got your Stanley mug with you. Slap bracelet going back to the 90s. Just be careful out there with the big cups. That's we, all I'm saying. We got the the Sam's Club edition of those months ago. They're pretty nice. I've got a Stanley from the 20th century. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? You can you, you, you uncurl it and you got a little cup suddenly. And it's got that top on it. You got to unscrew the top. It's a whole thing. It's the old school Stanley. Yeah, I had two very blue collar grandfathers and we ended up inheriting a number of Stanley things over the years. Yeah, before it was cool. There's a class action lawsuit that alleges that Stanley deceived customers by not adequately disclosing that there was lead in its products that could lead to lead poisoning. You would think so. if, if your entire business model was hydration that you would probably avoid having lead in your products. Yeah, but, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's how corporate deception goes, I guess. <laughs> like, I don't know. What do you expect? <laughs> All right, let's get off the Stanley I, thing. I want to circle back on some before you read whatever reviews you, you have. To we read. only have one review to read. Okay. Uh, and you, you have some, you have, uh, I I'm, believe, an email or two. I might correctly. or might not. We'll see. We'll see. Um, but <laughs> uh, you were, you were speaking of slander, you were slandering the Celtics before we uh, began this podcast. I don't think you know what the word slander means. Um, I know what it means, but... It also colloquially means just bad-mouthing so, so them. You, yeah, do, how so, your generation misuses the, the term. That's yes. that, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll give you that one. It is yes. misused. But um, but nonetheless, other people would, would use the same word. Yes, incorrectly. There. Okay, sure. Um, you're convinced by the two head-to-head -head matchups that, that Boston cannot beat the Nuggets in a seven-game series. No, they cannot. And I'll give you <clears throat> one very clear reason why they can't. Fourth quarter. The Celtics are pretty average in crunch time. They kind of need a big lead to squander at the end of a game to give back to the team. The Nuggets are the complete opposite. You get them in the fourth quarter and it's close, they're going to win that game. And that's what I see happening. They play a bunch of they, – they play, th I don't know, five games, five, six-game series. Maybe they go six. The Nuggets win those games. I'm just going to throw some numbers at you. As of March 21st, my grandfather's birthday. Happy birthday to him. Um, the Nuggets have the number one clutch net rating in the NBA, 26.9. Pretty good. Boston Celtics have the number five clutch net rating in the NBA, 20.4. Your argument is dead already. Uh, assist to turnover okay, ratio. First, first of all, first of all anybody who's watched the Celtics can tell you that they get a little flighty at the end of game. I think last shot situations are an extremely fair concern. Last two minutes is, is the concern. Okay, yeah. I, in particular, last shot, I think. Is, but, like, sure. I'm just saying the numbers show that they are beating teams by 20 points per 100 possessions. Define, define clutch time. Clutch time is inside of five minutes. In I want to know inside of two minutes. Clutch time is inside of five minutes in regulation or, and or overtime in a game where the margin is five points or fewer. That's what it means. And that is largely understood and accepted to be a, a oh, solid barometer of clutch time. And, but, but what I'm talking about is close game last two minutes. Jalen Brown can't handle the ball. Um, they seem to not have an offense that generates open looks. In that time, a lot of times it's just like, can Jason Tatum be a superhero and hit some really good, crazy shots? Mm -hmm. And if that can't happen, they're in trouble. He missed a wide open shot that would have given them the lead in Denver. So, I mean, that's not like, he just missed the shot. That's not a, our offense is bad in this situation. Does Jason Tatum scare you in a seven game series? Yes. He's a Aaron, what do you think? I, I don't think he scares me as much as like them as a collective unit does, but but of course he's one of the best players in the league. I don't I don't know if I, that doesn't mean that he has to be the scariest individual player that Denver could possibly face in a seven. He kind of want one of those to win an NBA Finals. 
Maybe. Boston almost did it when he was 23. Almost? Yeah, they were up 2-1 and up in the fourth quarter. And then what happened? It didn't work out. Jordan was Poole. T- Jordan Poole. He was 23 you or Jordan 24 Poole years old. Like, what are you talking about? Like, you're... I. Jordan Poole got paid off of that. You know who else did? I completely understand, like... Andrew Wiggins. <laughs> so I, we're talking about Andrew Wiggins and Jordan Poole were too much for them in an NBA Finals. I got to see it. I completely understand skepticism toward them. They are a historically good team right now in terms of the numbers. The Suns were two years ago. How'd that go? God, sorry. I don't know what to tell you. Like, the Celtics have been right there for years, and I think this is clearly the best manifestation of them. I think if they're healthy, their five goes toe-to-toe with Denver's. Both of those games were extremely close. I think it would be a heck of a series. My hunch is that it could go seven games. Um, I think Denver could win. I think Boston could win. That's kind of where I'm at on it. Like, I I think it's absurd to say that Boston is incapable of winning a seven game series against the Nuggets. That is outrageous to me. Okay, I won't go that far. Well, let's just I won't also go, so go far back to the say Nuggets. that they're incapable. But I would say I would heavily, heavily favor 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 the Nuggets on this. Like, not not the fact that the Celtics right now are. NBA title favorites over the Nuggets, I think, is total garbage. It should be the Nuggets, clearly. The like so assisted turnover is like Denver's like hallmark, right? They are they don't cough the ball up. They assist a ton of their made baskets. We're talking about the clutch time stuff. Nuggets have a one point nine one assist to turnover in clutch time. Celtics have a one point nine six. It's better. Guess what? True shooting percentage. They are both in the top five in the league on that in clutch time. If if Boston stays to its identity to the rest of the game, and I understand that that's an if because they get away from what makes them so good a lot in those situations, and it's something that whether it's coaching or players' execution, they need to figure out. If you know they, who doesn't need to figure that out? The Nuggets. I know they, they don't. They got that I, dialed in. And I think if you're going to make the case that the Nuggets can win the series, like, that's a huge part of it. But, like, I just, like, I think it gets overplayed a little bit that that Boston is just inept in this situation and, and the Nuggets are I can just tell you what I've seen you know, with my own know. eyes in big, in big games that they've played this year. I don't trust them. I don't trust them in that situation. The Nuggets, I trust them more than – they always get a good shot. I trust the Nuggets more than any other team in those situations, for sure. Always get a good shot. I do want to... Uh, I was looking at just some individual percentages. Uh, Jokic in clutch time, 57.6% from the field. Um, that is a higher percentage than anyone who has attempted more shots in clutch time than him this season in the league. So best combination of volume and efficiency, basically, in the league in clutch time. Um Jamal Murray, 56.3% from the field. Pretty good for a guard. <laughs> 40% from three in clutch time. Um, he's taking a little bit of a smaller number of the shots than um, Jokic, but he's still top 60 in the league. Does, um, does Jamal have a clutch time? Does Jamal still have a chance at LNBA, do you think? Or? No, he, in fact, he's officially eliminated. Officially. When did that happen? Um, a few games ago. He okay. So I think. I want to say he could still play 65, but he hasn't reached the minutes minimum in all those games. So, ah. so he's done. Yeah. Tough break. Yep. Although he probably wouldn't have made it anyway. Um, he's, he's had a really good season. Yeah. But it, it, would have been, it would be tough statistically. It was going to be tough. Um, I think he – my hunch is that he would have fallen short. But real quick, right. Michael right. Porter Jr. <clears throat> I just I just want to throw this out there since the break. Okay. Um, because he's been outstanding, and he's kind of the reason they won that game in Minnesota. Averaging 20.4 points, um, that's four more than he's averaging on the season. He is shooting 43.6% from three on 7.2 attempts per game. That is crazy. That's really good. Like really high volume, really high percentage. Um, Shooting 14 times a game, that's up. He's 55% from the field. He's getting 7.3 rebounds. Um Again, his rebounding has been better than any season in his career, but he's been uh, effective at that during this stretch. Just, just need to mention that the the twelve and two thing since the break 
doesn't really happen without him. <laughs> he's he's well, it's their starting five, and, and to a certain degree, what they've figured out with the bench. But yeah. I mean, at the, the Nuggets' core, they just have the best starting five in the league. Yeah, there's nobody that matches their starting five in terms of fitting together uh, and and being able to perform offensively and defensively. What do you think of? Uh, I think Milwaukee's starting five, when healthy, has a higher net rating. Actually, they are performing yeah. better analytically. But they get Nicole, albeit Jokic. in like. 200 fewer minutes. Yeah, I, the Nuggets have Nikola Jokic. And, and that's nothing, no slight to Giannis, who's a fantastic player, too. Um, and Damian Lillard's kind of a turnstile. You're not getting a lot of defense out of Damian Lillard. The rest of it is really good, and Damian Lillard's really good offensively. Um, I think as a complete package, I would take the Nuggets starting five. Okay, fair enough. But I will say this. Bucks scare me more than the Celtics do. I just think that's wrong, but but fair, I guess. I don't know. It's Giannis. Giannis is a f- dog. That guy is coming at you all game, relentless, and really wants to win. Jason, like, are we forgetting that Tatum scored 50 in a game seven a year ago? Like, what is going on here? Well, like, the, here here's the problem. Did they win? The Eastern Conference Finals with Game 7 in their own place. You mean when Tatum got hurt two minutes into the game? <laughs> all, all I know is they didn't After, win that like, game. Like, what are you... T- you're just throwing out all the factors for a lazy argument. Like, that's what this is. <laughs> right. I'm not saying Tatum's a better player than Giannis, but, like, the, the amount a. A. of, Ron, like... A. A. Ron. The amount of discrediting done to Tatum at, at in who, his who, age 25-26 season... Is, is St. Louis Bennett here... Uh, maybe a little too much on the Tatum bandwagon. He's a little sensitive about St. Louis. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about these Eastern Conference teams. I think the gauntlet of the West is much more daunting than either of those two teams. Do you think it is? Interesting. I, I, yeah. here, here's the thing. I like Minnesota. Is Minnesota tougher than either one of those teams? That's a dogfight. I think it is. A dog I think fight. they win it, the but Nuggets it's a dogfight. Yeah, yeah. They, they, Minnesota literally has not won a playoff series with this group. They've yeah, but again, no, that's, that's, that's not something to scoff. Yeah, at. but that's a bad faith argument because they've taken a massive step this year. They've just went from the eight seed to, right. to the borderline a, one two a, seed. There's a difference between the playoffs and the regular season. Memphis last year didn't go so great for them in the playoffs, no, and they yeah. had a high seed. You, there, there, it's a different game when I you agree. get to the playoffs. I, and I think it's fair to compare like the OKC and Minnesota situation to kind of like Sacramento, Memphis last year. I think that's completely fair, but, but like. Denver hadn't necessarily shown they could do it before last year. Incorrect. You know, like, they had been to a conference finals. Okay. They, they had won multiple playoff series before that happened. But, they, but and, Boston making a finals and making other conference finals doesn't count in their favor. Interesting. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> I, you're putting words in my mouth. I didn't. I never said that. No, you're just actively trying to discredit what they've done in because of what they have failed to do after what they've done. I'm just talking about. It's winning. an interesting. I'm talking about winning a championship, and I will say this: I think I think the Celtics would scare me more than Minnesota. The Celtics would scare me more than OKC. The Celtics would scare, anybody in the West outside of the Nuggets. They would. I will say that. I I don't think there's a single team in the West that scares me as much as the Bucks and the Celtics. I think I agree on that. Who's the scariest? Uh, are you starting to look at some of the first round? You know. I, I've looked a little bit. Musical I, chairs. I, it's it's so hard to because it's you got the playing game. You don't yeah. have no idea how it's going to shake out. Um, but I would say of all those West teams, like I hate to say it, but like it's it would still be like the Lakers would scare me more than some of these new breed Western okay. Conference teams because they have LeBron and they have AD. They've done it before. OKC hmm. hasn't even played in a playoff game yet, and we don't know what that's going to look like. You know, Aaron can speak to this. When the Nuggets were really good the first year they went to the playoffs for the first time in a long time. They're really good, but that first series against the Spurs, they looked shaky. It was tough. It went way farther than it should have based on talent. Right, and then the Portland series. They should have won that. A series they should have won, and they mm. just could not close out in any sort of way. Yeah, and and so that's what I'm getting at. Like, you get into the playoffs, you haven't been there before, it's a different animal, and 
it's just hard to trust some of these new teams. Like, okay, see, I think they have the talent. I think they're really good, but I haven't seen it from them yet. They haven't had to go through those those games and then have their flaws exposed in the way that they get exposed in the seven-game series. There's a psychological element to that that you have to kind of go through to understand. That's what makes me pause with those teams. That was what was scary with the Nuggets, too, in those two series early in their run is they were letting guys like Zach Collins and El Farouk Aminu give them trouble. Right. Like big time, Chief Aminu was like giving them hell and they couldn't do anything about it. And uh, Yeah, they just – they Evan, didn't – Evan Turner. Right. They didn't have the reps. <laughs> they did not have the playoff reps. And once they got them, they became a real problem in the playoffs and they were really tough to beat. But they had to get them first. And Minnesota put them out in that uh, playing game. Right. They took a, a number of lumps along the way and right. learned to win at every different level right. of the playoff. Right. right. Jamal sort of discovered himself as a playoff performer in that San Antonio series. Um, and although he did get outplayed in the Portland series, he wasn't as good in that, that Portland series. In the 54 year. overtime game, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't yeah. close out. Yeah. That was a heck of a game. Gosh, what a fun uh, to go back to that. That was a while ago. But um, those, are, those are all great points that, that didn't answer my question, but. Fair. What's your question? It was about first round potential teams, oh, not not um, OKC. But well, if I was the Nuggets, I would not want to play the Lakers in the first round. Not that I say, not that I don't think they would beat I think, them because I, I think, think the they Suns, would. I think the Suns are maybe the scarier one. I, the Suns. I mean, you want to talk about bad in the fourth quarter? They're yeah, like I know historically I know. bad in the fourth quarter. Yeah. They fall apart. That I mean, the game just, that they beat the Nuggets, they had like a twenty point lead. I know. I know. I, the, the, they, they're, yeah, they're really bad in the fourth quarter. There's, I, I'm not, I'm not saying the Suns can win that series. I'm just saying, like, if you're thinking about first round potential matchups, I think you want someone who you can, you know, fingers crossed, sweep. And the Sun, I think the Suns can steal a game or two, kind of in the way that they did last year. I think the like, Lakers could steal a game or two. Yeah, all those games last year were close. Every single one of those games in that Western Conference Finals were, were close. As compared to the Suns actually winning two games. they Yes, <laughs> correct. But it was also Devin Booker like playing out of that's, his mind. But that's what I'm saying. Like Booker's capable of doing that on any given night, as is Durant. And so like I do, yeah. they can just like wear you down a little hot, bit more with a couple extra games. Hot, and I, and hot I, take for you. Um, Kevin Durant, who's got great numbers this year, has lost a step. <laughs> He might be first team all NBA. <laughs> I know. But that tells you how good he was. It's the numbers. But the thing is, is like look at look at their fourth go go look at no, Kevin Durant's yeah, fourth yeah. quarter numbers. Yeah. Go look them up. No, I know. It's not good. They're terrible. Yeah. And he was terrible in that game. I know he hit the three pointer to tie the game. Up until then in the fourth quarter, he was Yeah, awful. he was he, he had a really bad game until that shot and then had a great overtime basically. So right. um but that's a li- that's kind of the point, like, in me saying that you don't want to see them as a first round team. It's like he has a bad game and he scores thirty five. Like, he can score fifty on a good night. Booker can score fifty on a good night, and then suddenly it's in a game six on, and it's like yeah. eh, unfortunate. And you yeah. probably win the series still, but like, yeah. you you just yeah. might have to play more games. LeBron James, man. Okay, fair. That's fair. LeBron freaking James. I don't think they should be scared of the Warriors at all. No, I don't think I so think either. That's, no. I think that's done. That ship sailed. Yeah. It was a good run, though. Heck yeah, of, it was all right. <laughs> heck of a run. <laughs> it was all right. I, I, I would love to go back and see what it looks like if Kevin Durant didn't join them. Like, what happens? You're obsessed with that, but yeah. I, well, it's a part of the NBA that's like, oh, no, God, we, we just ruined like three seasons uh, because Kevin Durant is uh, a little uh, – what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, uh, insecure, I think is the word. I thought you were going to just try to throw Rizzy out there. <laughs> <laughs> a little Riz God. <laughs> yeah. um, he, was, okay. he was looking for a way to use it and couldn't come around. Uh, anything else you want to get to, Bennett, before we uh, get to emails? I and... think that covers it pretty much. Yeah? You feel good? Yeah. I'm taking a few days off after this, so. What are you going to do? Watch March Madness, probably. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. No spring yeah. break trip. No spring break trip. I travel enough. <laughs> um, okay, uh, so you've got some emails, correct? I don't know. You keep saying this, and now I'm... You told me you had emails. They're, like, deep in you, my you... inbox. I don't know if I'm going to be able to find them. <laughs> okay, well, I've got one review. Um, 
I believe it's the only review we have that's new in the last two months, which means that, listeners, you're not doing a great job. I, I don't know how any other way to put it, but uh, good iTunes, five stars. Lie with your stars. Tell the truth with your review. <laughs> iTunes Nuggets, Inc. It's right there. Right now we've got 92 reviews. That's not nearly enough. We need more. I know at least like 10 more people listen to this podcast than 92. So that's like 10 of you that are not doing your job. Um, all right. So here is our newest review. And this is from Pal Mofer. I'm just going to call it Pal Mofer. Okay. Um, the title, How is the Smell Today? Oh, that's a good title. That is a good title. That, that's a, it, it, you know he, that's a deep cut. A Nuggets Inc. deep cut if you're Respect. if you're you're doing how's the smell today. There's an emoji there, I think. Is that an emoji? It's a nose emoji. It is a nose emoji. Yeah. How's the smell today with a nose emoji? Five <laughs> stars. Five stars. So so far, so good from our man or woman, Palmofer. Matt is gaslighting us into believing he's not a fifty nine year old man. A A Ron has the best takes. Bennett is a good replacement for Mike. Mike is telling on himself 3.97 stars. That's a heck of best, a review. Best review of all time. That's, that is a Hall of Fame review right there. He's so right about you. <laughs> <laughs> right about everything. Listen. I don't know about the second part. I just turned 43 like last week, so I know that for sure. Happy 43rd. Thank you. Or do you want me to say happy 59th? No. No, that would be lying. Man, are you, I think you should guys we unpack are, that. Like, yeah, I think we should. Weren't you talking about when you were a young boy watching the Supersonics win the NBA title? No, I did not. I was yes. not talking. And, and you were talking about when Arizona State and Wyoming existed in the same athletic conference. We were both talking about in that. your youth. You, no, I did not I, say. I was in talking my youth. about it. I did no, at no. One that point was Bennett. History. Bennett. Bennett was trying to claim that he remembered those days. That that was not me. And then you stepped in and said, "I did remember those days. I lived through them." Now, now you're gaslighting. Who's doing the gaslighting here? Who's who's the who's the gaslighter? This is pretty funny. I don't know. I wasn't born then, so I can't say. Anyway, great review from Pal Mofer. Uh, that that is a uh, all, all timer again. iTunes, five stars. Lie with your stars. Tell the truth with the review. As you can see. Typed in three point nine seven stars. We know what he what what Palmofer thinks. He's right about everything other than the the fifty nine year old man thing. Yeah, yeah, I think he's right about everything. Yeah, except for the takes best yeah, takes wh part. What year were you born? Nineteen eighty one. Heck of a year. Nineteen eighty one. Nineteen eighty one. Year before the Cards won the series. Correct. The Cards have won the series three times in my lifetime. That's great. Twice in mine. That's pretty good. It is. Yeah. I can't complain. <laughs> uh, uh, I found one question. It's kind of a random question, but um, but you know, I'm. Was it one of these math digs that you prompted people to it, give you? It's not a math dig, but it's a pull open a bunch of basketball reference page, um, kind of question. The question from Chris Hudson was how many games of playoff experience does each Nugget have at this point? It wasn't that long ago that the number was zero, or at least in single digits, but by now this is a seasoned, play a seasoned team of playoff vets. I was surprised years ago to hear that Austin Rivers had 80-some games of playoff experience. Is that true? 80? That doesn't sound right. That but. that seems like a high number. But hey, he was. Let's see. I'm trying to think of his run. He was on a couple of playoff teams as a as a bench player. But now, some of the Nuggets, namely Jokic, might be approaching that mark. This is going to be some great podcasting. While I Google Austin Rivers, Austin Rivers. He's he's now got his own podcast, I believe. Yeah, he was involved in all that. Uh, the Reddick Doc drama back when that was going on. I, I missed the Reddick Doc drama. Yeah, there, I, it was it was kind of a slow news cycle. We need some controversy to fill the space. What basically. was the controversy? Doc Rivers was claiming that he like had a bunch of hindsight bias, or it, it, that's what it was interpreted as. Uh, sorry, uh, 
he was claiming that he like knew things were going wrong at various points for teams throughout his career and then reddick said that all this guy does is make excuses and then austin rivers was like um was like doc made your career oh like, wow and it was just a doc, bunch he had some games with the magic before he ever showed up with doc yeah i don't know man um i don't know where this guy got his austin rivers numbers <laughs> uh i mean he only started 15 but he played 64 playoff games that's more than i would have thought it is more than i would have thought um so here's all all uh, Play, nuggets playoff hero by the way okay you you remember those days a ron that was during the the dark days of jamal murray acl injury yeah he was all right so do you want to do trivia and uh and try to rank the five starters by playoff experience yeah i can do that shouldn't be too hard i don't think I think KCP's number one. KCP is not number one. Not number one? Huh. All right. So then Nikola Jokic? He is. Okay. 68. He's past the Austin Rivers benchmark. Nice. Um, So Nikola Jokic, number one. Then KCP? Yeah, looks like it. 50. Okay. Uh, Then I'll I'll go... uh, I think I'll go Jamal. Correct. 49. <laughs> Boom. Boom. And and then I will go Aaron Gordon. Correct. 40. MPG. MPJ. No, it was MPJ at uh, 33, I believe, is what it was. So there's your answer. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. MPJ's played in 49. He's started in 33. Oh, uh, okay. Well, Dang. There That's- you go. That's kind of so. Jamal Jamal's played more than KCP. Sorry, you were completely wrong, oh. and then I was wrong in giving you answers. <laughs> <laughs> what, what a segment! <laughs> yeah, that was great. That was great. Um, okay, I think I've got a couple of emails here. Let me let me see if I can dig up. These might be a little old. They might be a little dated. Uh, and if that's the case, you know, we just deal with it. Um, I don't know if our favorite pothead uh, chimed in or not. Well, while you're looking, did you see Dune yet? Oh, my gosh. I saw Dune 1. Have you seen Dune 2? You're ready for Dune 2 now. I I haven't seen Dune 2 yet, no. Go see it, like today. No. Um, It's it's March Madness time. I'm not... I have a... That's fair. Don't see it this weekend. See it Monday. I have a gift card in my pocket to the AMC if you want to go check it out. Was that the gift card I gave you? No, it was given to me previously for something else, and it's just been in my wallet for about 10 years. Okay. Okay, we've got two emails from our guy, Paul Koulos. Koulos. Hmm. Um, all right. MPJ Flip is the title. Remember, Paul was, uh, he was ready to ship MPJ out of town not too long ago. Howdy, Mr. Mr. Durando, Shudududubert, and last but not least, the indefatigable, 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 I cannot, I cannot say this word, indefatigable, indefatigable. <laughs> I'm going to have a stroke. <laughs> a- Aaron. <laughs> Can I keep reading this or should we just re-record this? It's a great question, actually. <laughs> uh, maybe just keep going. Yeah. Let's, let's see what happens. <laughs> I don't know. Keep going. Just keep reading the email. <laughs> well, MPJ has been on a two-game terror. Last night in Portland, he looked all world. Hold that trade email of mine. In today's Denver Post, I had a Denver Post paper out back when the paper was an evening paper. Durando failed to mention Bill Walton's most important trait. He's a deadhead. Epic fail by young Durando. Many thanks for the great podcast. NFA, not fade away. It's a Grateful Dead thing. I know many a deadhead. Trust me, it was not a... Are your parents deadheads? uh, No, but my girlfriend's sister is, and my girlfriend by osmosis kind of is too. I was once. Nice. My daughter's named after a dead song. Not her first name, middle name. What's her middle name? Magnolia. Oh, Sugar Magnolia. Mm-hmm. 
Beautiful song. Fantastic song. Great song. I, I've met a few Althea's in my day. Uh, my One of my best friends, his daughter is Stella, after Stella Blue. Um, love me. Love me some dead. I actually saw them in Boulder not too long ago. Outside of Jerry, of course. She's been dead since 94, before you were born. Um, Dang. Okay. N- <laughs> next one. This got dark. Rest in peace, Jerry. Yeah, bless. Yeah. Great. One finger missing, and he still could play the guitar. Fantastic. Jonah Hill upcoming as Jerry Garcia. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. Bennett, want to weigh in on that? Um, I'm sorry. I was preparing another trivia question for Matt, and I didn't hear what your comment was. <laughs> Basically, Jonah Hill doesn't miss, but some other stuff, too. Yeah, I like Jonah Hill. Eh, he's all right. Go on. He's fine. Uh, next email, MPJ. So Paul Kulas is with the second MPJ email. Yeah. We're really doing that. Um, this one was on March 3rd, my birthday, by the way. Howdy, Mr. Shadubert, Durando, and the ineffable Aaron. Much easier to say ineffable. Lake show game last night was impressive. Nugs are playing great. MPJ is playing lights out. Have we seen this level of consistency from him? Not that I recall. I know Mike has been following Nicola Sachs. Sachs? For his back? Nicole Sachs? Who's Nicole Sachs? What? I know Mike has been following Nicole Sachs. Nicole Sachs. Do you know who that is? Uh, it sounds familiar, but... Uh, it must be a doctor of some sort. Yeah. Um, it's funny, I, he... I think he gets a little tired of the questions that Paul is asking in this email, which are basically like about your health this year and getting to play every game and that kind of thing. Yeah. But um, so he says, do we attribute Mike's play to him feeling better? I wonder if Durendo has the inside scoop. Also, did Kiz retire? No, he didn't. He just went somewhere else. That's it. Yeah. I mean, there's not a, there's not a, like the availability has been awesome for MPJ and surely like to be able to build up a full body of work and a head of steam throughout a season is definitely going to help. But, um, sure. but you know, it's, he's also been an amazing shot maker for his entire life. So yeah, no doubt about that. You know, yeah. it's good to see him healthy for sure. That's all I got. Uh, the most playoff experience on the Nuggets roster as a whole. Your options are A, Nikola Jokic, B, Justin Holiday. I said, said the question again. The sorry. most games of playoff experience on the roster, not just the starting five. Okay. A, Nikola Jokic, B, Justin Holiday, C, DeAndre Jordan, D, Reggie Jackson. DeAndre. DeAndre. Incorrect. Reggie? Yes. Wow. Oh, I guess he was with OKC there for a sec, too. Got him on uh, 75 playoff games. Big government. Yeah. DeAndre Jordan has played Had in himself a moment. 64. In Miami. Which is actually fewer than Jokic. Wow. Hmm. So there you go. It seemed like their run was longer when he was there in L.A. But, yeah, they, well, yeah, they kept kind of falling short in the second round. That, that, that was their problem. <laughs> Speaking of Doc Rivers... Um, he, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that three one series uh, loss to uh, Houston is one of the greatest blunders of all time. Truly, yeah. Um, that they should have won that series going away. They had no business losing that. You know, Josh Smith starts hitting threes. That's part of it. Like, who could have seen that coming? Uh, but they had the way better team. And I I think that we all missed out on not having that Clippers team play that Warriors team that had yet to win a finals definitely in the Western Conference finals I think that would have been a f- heck of a series I agree yeah mm. oh well yeah that's how it goes <laughs> <laughs> the Warriors were really good they probably would have won anyway yeah but. well that was you know Steph was there was a time when Steph was kind of shaky in the playoffs um he that finals, if you recall, that year that they won. Not MVP. So. Not MVP. And part of it was he just didn't play all that well for several games. Um, LeBron was incredible. LeBron should have been MVP. He was getting fouled on like every play <laughs> in yeah. that series and still like scoring 40. And and he it was a master class in 
knowing what your team is in the moment, I don't have Kyrie Irving. I don't have Kevin Love. So I am going to dribble the ball up slowly, and I'm going to run down the shot clock on every possession. It was amazing um, that they almost won that series. That That's that's one of his all-time moments, I feel like. I agree. Yeah. I, I, I think he should have won finals MVP. I agree. I think we should do that more. Yeah. Not more, but... When it's, when Normal, it's warranted. Normalize it when it's warranted, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, Jerry West. Yeah, Jerry West did mm-hmm. it one time. I think that's the only time that's happened. I think happened. it's happened once in a Super Bowl, too. Maybe a Cowboys player once in, like, the 80s. Cowboys didn't make the Super Bowl in the 80s. They were bad 70s in the 70s then. Yeah, the Cowboys were that was, I think That was the end of the Tom Landry era. Sorry, it all, those decades blur together for me. I, I know it's different for you because you were alive back then, but uh, <laughs> in the 70s. But. <laughs> <laughs> Just stop it. Um, a- Aaron, do you have anything you want to say before we sign off? No. Okay. Bennett, is there any parting thoughts for you before we uh, say adieu? You're about to go on vacation. Just that you're overlooking the Celtics. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to a Nuggets Celtics finals. So It would be fun. I-, I do think it would be a great series that the Nuggets would eventually win. Um, and I would enjoy it <laughs> quite a bit. That's um, great. But yeah. In the meantime, we can wait for that uh, game six of Nuggets Suns in the first round. So, <laughs> do you think the Suns are gonna make the playoffs and make get out of the play in? Do you do you think that's gonna happen? I don't know. It's it. It's kind of interesting because the Pelicans have kind of staked their claim to that five, right? And. Okay. So it's really the three-way battle for for the sixth seed. Um, uh, out of those teams, the the teams at the bottom, the Mavericks, Mavericks, Kings, the Suns. Kings, the Suns, the Lakers, the Warriors. If you were to rank those five, like which one of those do you least want to see? Is it the Suns? I think it's the Suns or the Mavericks. But I can't tell if I'm just saying that because they're the two teams that the Nuggets have lost to in the last month, like. <laughs> Hmm. But I don't know. I just think of like, like Luca is twenty fifteen LeBron esque in a in a way. I think to where if there's anyone on any of those teams toward the bottom of the standings who is just like an individual juggernaut who can who can win a game on his own and scare you over the course of a series, it's him. That's a fair point. Um, and then the Suns have you know they don't have a Luca, but they have two guys who are right up near that tier. Bradley Beal ain't scaring you. Not that much. St. Louis, born and bred. Also, it would just be interesting to, to see a little Nurkic, Jokic in the playoffs again, you know? Oh, so. Nurk. <laughs> uh, Nurk. Neither of them have a lot of depth, so it's kind of just like that's very much a bet on the top-end talent on those teams, but that's kind of yeah. my hunch at least. I don't know. Still the Lakers. Still the Lakers for me. Okay. So, all right. I think that wraps it up for us. Uh, Bennett, glad to be back in the chair with you, gaslighting our listeners. Uh, and we'll be back here again soon. Um, playoffs are coming. It's about to get really interesting here in Nuggets land. Uh, I think we still got a good two and a half months of basketball left. I think so, too. Excited. Title time, USA. I'll riz you guys later. Looks like we have another dragon, Master Ace, spitting the burning passion. It's about to be a catastrophe. He thought I was the only survivor, but at last we meet. Like the food vegans don't eat. I know you can see the infernal blaze. We would probably burn the stage and leave it with third degrees. And inside of us is an internal blaze, blazing eternally like a furnace. But it's so hot, it's burning. The furnace is framed. Your family and furniture isn't safe. Better evacuate, cause the skill we can calibrate reduces the chances of your survival. If you ever try to retaliate, so dance to this recital so you can slowly gravitate towards us. Who needs a chorus when you're hotter than Earth's core is? No strings attached, we're no puppets, yo, we're cordless. I fly. Even when I'm hurt, yo, that's soaring Your skill isn't apparent, it's an orphan We proceed to spit the verse That takes your spirit and lifts it high into the earth's atmospheres Don't come, atmosphere of influence, you squares I take a spear and put it 
it through you, I raise the stakes high Medium rare, you're the least of the media's fears Why he's the reason the media's scared Please be prepared to be impaired Go see repairs, defeating people in pairs Jordans, I thought I needed pairs To be compared to the people in pairs This is a journey into sound a journey which along the way will bring to you new color, new dimension, new values, and a new experience. Gather round hip hoppers as if you're still living. Still got love for the game, I'm still giving, and still driven. Like Diddy in the Maybach. I've been repping for the city since way back. All y'all rappers better stay back. Cause you still can't find me, I'm a needle in a haystack A rare breeze sitting high up in the chariot While y'all dudes getting high up in the Marriott Well, consider this your wake-up call If you're married to the game, it's the breakup call And you ain't wearing a crown if you're not tearing it down You clowns get found right there in the ground Six feet, dirt nap, that's because your shit's weak I'm a giant, you a pip sweet Welcome to my kingdom, yup, throne as an occupant Read my name at the bottom of the document Check the scroll Giving good times like Esther Rowe Peace to keep the E, God bless the soul Trying to get more checks to hold On some slick brick, Mr. T shit Big chest of gold And the flow still extra cold Like the North Pole, cocaine snow Another lost soul Bow down, it's the Grand Royal Yup, 20 plus years in the game Still the fans loyal <laughs> 